So about midweek, uh, we, I go to a, a, a soccer game. We call it soccer, they call it football, right? And there's 10,000 folks that are, that are coming in. And they come in from separate entrances because 5,000 of them are Catholics and 5,000 of them are Protestants. And they don't bring them in the same door, folks, okay? And you guys have probably seen this on TV. They bring them in from se separate entrances. I'm telling you right now, you could have cut the tension with the knife. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. They're chanting, you know, going back and forth, you know, being screaming and hollering and, you know, the actions. It was, it was fascinating. Fascinating. You could feel the tension. They don't sell alcohol inside of that facility. This was in Dundee, Scotland. They don't sell alcohol. Why? Because most of those people had come and they had done a good job drinking before they got there. So spirits were high, a lot of excitement. And then all of a sudden, I'm with this young officer, 10 year veteran. His name's Mikey. And Mikey gets a, a call on the radio hey, come to the front gate. You got a, a young man that's at the front gate, and he, uh, he's, uh, he, they're not letting him in because he's too intoxicated, and he's causing a problem. So Mikey gets to the front gate couple officers back him up behind, they come in behind him. And, and, and Mikey has this conversation with the guy. Hey buddy, listen, I, I know you can't get in, I'm gonna help walk you out. And what does this guy do? Boop, out comes the phone, right up in Mikey's face, and it was the MF this, and you name it, every four letter word, and he's going to town. And Mikey just kind of stands there, in, in, a, in a traditional police posture, he's, he's protecting himself, he's got a couple folks behind him, and this guy goes on. And I start to watch my watch a little bit. One minute goes by, Two minutes goes by, we're now into the third minute. And all of a sudden, this guy's starting to come down a little bit. Come down. And finally, he takes this like gaping breath. And Mikey says to him, hey man, are you finished? And the guy didn't know what to say. He's like, yeah, I'm done. And he says, well, we still gotta leave. I'll walk out of here, make sure you get a cap. And he takes him and walks him out of there. I thought to myself, that was fascinating. That was fascinating. Because I don't think that would've happened to my agency. So I'll tell you why. So what's traditional police thinking do, right? So we, we roll into that environment, this individual's surrounded by people. I mean, there's all kinds of people at the gate, very disorderly, and what have we traditionally done? If you don't knock it off in 10 seconds, I'm gonna arrest you for disorderly conduct. And then what does that guy do? Ba 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 And then I go, hands on. So I asked Mikey, I said, Mikey, why'd you let that guy stand and talk to you like that for three minutes? And he said to me, he said, what are you talking about, Tom? He said, you let that guy scream in your face for three minutes. He said, Tom, it wasn't personal. He says, he yelling at me, he's yelling at my uniform. He don't even know me. He says, after a while, that guy's gonna tune down us eventually. He's gonna come down. His emotions are gonna come down, and then I'm gonna walk him out of here. Otherwise, I gotta make an arrest. I said, this could turn into something that doesn't need to be, and we can end it. And I looked at Mikey and I said, that's pretty impressive. Because in the US, at least my teaching, we weren't really taught to think like that, you know? We were the police. We were in charge. When in charge, be in charge. You know, we were taught to man presence. We were taught to give orders. And Mikey stepped back a little bit, and he let that guy wind down. And then he walked that guy out of there, no harm, no foul. So I took.